So, so this this uh, this demonstration, Extinction Rebellion, you said has some some interesting people that are kind of endorsing it. Maybe not running it, but endorsing it. Such as Be further behind, you have to understand that there's a giant non-governmental organization complex. It's a huge international organizational structure of many different organizations like World Wildlife Fund, like Greenpeace and so on, which have very close connections with the UN and with international institutions, banks, financing organizations and so on. They have good connections with them over a long period of time. Is, is, that, is, been uh, pushing is, that, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, you've got to be connected in this world, right? Uh, yeah, but connections and there's connections and connections. I mean, for example, Greta Thunberg, you know, she's obviously someone who's standing up upright for what she believes in as a young person. For, for those for those people who don't know Greta Thunberg, explain who she is. That's a 16-year-old, right? She's a 16-year-old Swedish school student who uh -huh. who initiated a school strike of her own, uh -huh. and then was picked up the next on the second day of her strike by the head of a software app making company called There's No Time Left and they just launched on the 22nd of April. Their lead keynote speaker was a man by the name of Jeffrey Sachs. He was responsible for millions of deaths, I mean, for advocating policies that were introduced in Russia that carried out millions, that killed millions of people. And in Bolivia, he was the economic advisor to the dictator under Bolivia. Jeffrey Sachs? Jeffrey Sachs, yeah. Jeffrey Sachs is one of the major economic theorists in the world whose policies have been carried out in a number of countries, supposedly to fight inflation or to transform planned economies into private economies, uh, state economies into private economies. So the young lady Greta from um, from Sweden, yeah, uh, who's been picked up after two days of being on the yeah, strike. Suddenly she was all around the new, all around the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she was, and, and she was also getting heavily trolled by people like um, what's his name, Toby Young, and. Uh, they'll, I mean, right. they'll, they'll be they'll, in any circumstance. Uh, you can have an, a person who is promoted to represent a certain campaign, represent a certain body of ideas, a certain movement, who sometimes can be manipulated. For example, I was involved in a Marxist organisation. I've, I've still consider myself a Marxist, but I'm not an organisation. And we had a young comrade by the name of Malala. Malala was picked up by. NGOs and the BBC and so on. Malala, Malala why, why, why does that ring a bell? Malala is the, the is the, the the Pakistani woman who was shot in the face, girl who was shot in the face. Oh, for, for trying she to get an education, was that that's the one? That's right, that's yeah. right. Okay, so right, we right. were involved. With, we were. I was involved with the same organisation that was in, that was involved with her. Mm -hmm. um, and then after a short while, after being picked up and made into a global superstar, then you know she was in awe when she met the Queen. I mean, you know, you've got to realise the distinction between. <laughs> between who is fighting something, who you're fighting against, and who pretends to be supporting you, and oh. who pats you on the back and says, here's a I job for you, do this, and here's a job for you, do that. And then you end up, you end up with a com completely uh, powerless organization so, so, that's so, integrated oh, okay. with the whole system. Okay, so, so, so here we are. So we're down Extinction Rebellion. Yeah. People have come out, people yeah. have been arrested. Yeah. They feel very strong about the issue of yeah. you know of, of yeah. climate breakdown, environmental yeah. degradation, yeah. Yeah. deforestation, yeah. the the hole in the ozone layer. You name it, these people yeah. are protesting against it. Yeah. Are you saying that they're wrong to come out and do this? I'm not saying they're. I mean, I don't know what the specific, the specific issues from as far as I'm concerned, campaigning against environmental degradation, against the ecological destruction and pollution are correct and justified causes to engage in militant struggle. However. Um, I think, for example, the very, very fact that this demonstration now is calling itself to a close and exactly here in Hyde Park, where we have the right to assemble and gather since 1872, won by struggles of the people in order to achieve the right to speak, I think the fact that they're leaving here is indicative so of, 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 of what the problem is. OK, so what should they do? They are being basically told by the leadership or advised by the leadership and through their structure of organisation they've managed to get the people to agree to this that they will leave Marble Arch and they will no, dissolve no, no, no. themselves okay, I, I and said... then enter into discussions with Michael Govan right, no. What they should be doing is taking right, militant action. Do? They should occupy Hyde Park for indefinitely. Hyde Park was the place where we run the right to speak. Hyde Park is a green area. It's one of the few natural areas of London, yet it's been commercialised by giant corporations who come in here. A few weeks' time there'll be giant 
giant setups here, rigs here for 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 pop, pop concerts to raise funding. Okay, so to for, pay for the park. All right, so privatization for, of the for, nature. For people who don't know, explain who Michael Gove is. Michael Gove is the uh, secretary of the environment. Secretary of the environment. So in terms of the government having control over what happens with this country. When it comes down to the environment, he is the secretary of the environment. Yeah, so he's right. the head man for the environment. That's right. Right. Now, if these people out here are having a demonstration about the environment, would it make sense to speak to the head of the environment of the country? Well, first, it is that if you were to negotiate, first, it is a question who negotiates and about what. Second, um, no, it would not be logical to discuss with Michael Gove because Michael Gove is part of a section of the Tory party and, and, and the governmental party that has been carried out policies that are destructive to the environment and to international, well to the interests of the people internationally for decades. I mean it is a party of big business, it's a party of capital. So the idea that you can, you know, that you're going to get the the claw to, 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 to the, sorry, the, uh, the tiger to, uh, to, drink, to drink cow's milk, I think it's just foolish. You know, it's foolish, but it's not foolish from the point of view of some people who want to get a standing as look as appearing to be negotiators. I mean, ask yourself this, what kind of demonstration in British history have you got mass protests on the streets, a thousand people arrested, right, uh, locking up large parts of central London, and then the government suddenly decides to negotiate? It doesn't seem logical to me. Well, it also doesn't seem logical to me. I mean, I'm, I must admit, it's say, not conspiratorial, but I have a suspicious say, mind. You, you sound fairly cynic, cynical. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not cynical about the protesters. I'm mm. cynical about the way the protest was handled by the authorities and the relationship, and what that indicates about the relationships of power and how they view the nature of this protest. And there's reasons behind that, which I can explain to you, which are basically arguing is that there is a campaign internationally which is called Unlocking Global Finance for uh, Green Technology and Green Investment. You see, that, you, see that, you see when we were just talking here? That, World that, Economic Forum, you see basically. You that, that stopped there. He's walking off. You see him? He's got, he's got like the, the yellow and red and green shoulder bag. In front of you. Right in front of you. Yeah, okay. Black jeans. Yeah. Black top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you was talking yeah. and, you, and you dropped some information yeah. and he stopped and he kind of was like this. Right. Then he took out his phone and he started doing something. Right. And when I clocked him, because he had, he had that look about him of being something more than what right. he, you know? Right. And my thing is, is that something like this, what's happening here today, in terms of infiltration, in terms of people coming in, staring the direction of social movements, I mean, this, this is something that's been happening for the last couple hundred years. Yeah, but you got to understand, this wasn't a grassroots social movement created from below. This was a movement created by what was called the Climate Mobilisation. There's a book, there's a PhD expert who wrote a book called The Climate Mobilisation Strategy. In there, she uses the very word that Greta, Greta Thunberg repeats, and that is, imagine your house is on fire, what would you do? Uh, how to create a, 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 an emergency mobilisation, how to create a psychology of desperate emergency whereby we need to go to like on a war footing but you but that's the strategy okay, behind this but, movement but 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 sir you you it's like you're kind of people are out protesting they're raising good. awareness yeah, good. and it's like you're not happy with that no i'm trying to explain how the dynamic what this particular protest is about because this particular protest is not made up solely of the people go and demonstrate right it's it's made up also by interest groups which are behind mobilizing or attempting to mobilize private capital in particular capital that's normally locked up that's restricted in what you can do with it for example pension funds they're trying to get access to these funds in order to have a large-scale investment in technologies that actually got nothing to do with helping the environment and everything to do with plundering the environment do you do you believe in, it, in, in terms of like okay. renewable and clean energy and green energy do you, do you believe in that stuff do you think it has a place China spends four times as much as as America does on green technology. China is the number one investor in green technology. If I was to go over to that crowd over there and say uh, China's the South, China's doing what you want, they would think look think I'm a lunatic, right? Because China is actually engaged in a lot, a lot, and I and I, I I'm an expert on China. Right? That's my subject, right? But China is actually engaged in massive investment in green technology. But when it does so, at the same time as it does so, it pollutes the environment by producing the green technology. So the question is, who controls the technology? 
who decides what technology is. And there are steps you can take today that are much more concrete than that. For example, leaving here is foolish, I, I gave the reason why, because this is a direct example of the battle for nature. This is Hyde Park in the middle of London. If you occupy this place here and fight against the privatisation of the park, you are concretely dealing with the issue. These people are advocating, the for example, what's their solution for the jungles in, in South America? They say they privatise the friggin' jungles. That's what they want to do. Well, uh, what's I, I, Michael Gove's solution for, the, for, for, for nature in Britain? What he says, you know, raise funds, raise more funds from from the uh, what he called the National Trust. I did notice uh, yesterday on the uh, I think it was on, on, on RT and they mentioned that the uh, the indigenous land rights in Brazil. Yeah, that's right. The, the treaties have, yeah, the people have, have, are going to war about have, it. Have, they 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 basically put it in the hands of the agricultural that's right. department, that's which right. is in the back pocket of big the big finance. business. Yeah. And so all the indigenous people were coming out and they're having a protest. They're and as they were, to go to war, yeah. And and they also had the troops yeah, yeah, yeah. lining up. And yeah. you're thinking. Okay, so this is where we are. This is this is what's really going to go That's down. Right. That's right. I mean, I, I just in relation to because to, I was speaking here on Sunday at the Speaker's Corner, and I said, well, if you want to again, if you want to fight against the powers that be in relation to the ecology, you only have to go into Tesco's. In Tesco's, every single shelf is full of packaging, all made of plastic. We all know that poisons the environment. You can directly challenge them inside a shop right on your high street. 68% of the food supply of Britain comes through four companies. Four companies, Sainsbury's, Asda's, uh, Morrison's and uh, a Tesco. Tesco's got 29% of the market. You can just take all the stuff off the shelf, put it in baskets, push it out. Do you, do you go, do you, do you go to shelf. Tesco? I do, do, you, do but I'm, I'm advocating doing the, doing this type of action. Of course, I go to the supermarket. Yeah. But the point is, when I go there, I'm sick of the fact that the entire shelves are full of plastic plastic packaging. I'm sure everyone else would agree with and me. And you still and you still go there? I still go there, but I'm advocating the policy that you can do against there. I mean, everybody here lives in the environment they live in. They've got mobile phones on them as well. They're not sitting around saying we don't use any any electricity and don't use any resources. And those mobile phones have got coal tran in them and things like that. And wars have been fought over that in in the Congo, and people are dying well, about well, that. Well, so that, 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 that that really is is the is the crux of this of this whole protest movement, isn't it? Really, because when you think about it, when you really break it down. Are we prepared to make the sacrifices no, that we have to that. make in order to make the change that we claim that we want to have? I don't believe that that's the correct methodology of understanding it. It implies that well, the consumer that? and the producer are exactly the same thing. Production in, in, in the world we live in is for profit. It's organised by multinational corporations which dominate the entire world. Some 200 companies control 80% of the something like 80% of the stock market valuation in Britain, of the, of the corporate wealth in Britain. Yeah. In the world, about 500 companies control about 70% of world trade. So they're, they're, they are the core. That's where if you're targeting a, a, a target that controls world uh, ecological destruction and so on, that's where it is. It's not the consumer. The consumer is, play, is in a marketplace. They go to the shop. To purchase after working or whatever, go to the shop and purchase goods yeah, that are available. But, they don't decide. But, the but, you, and but so you, on. you know, and I know that one of the things that happened in South Africa was that there was a boycott where, if you bought stuff that came from South Africa, it, it was it was very very much like oh you buy South African apples, oh you buy South African right, exactly, and people boycotted the consumer I, boycotted. I had, a, I had a, fr a friend of mine. A man by the name of Nimrod Shajaki. He was, I was lucky to meet him many years ago in Dunn's store in Ireland. He organised a, a protest movement where the, he got the workers, or he backed the workers who refused to handle South African oranges. And as a consequence of that, there was a global movement connected to that. So I agree with that. The workers, you should, that's why I said about Tesco's and so on. You go into Tesco's, you run the campaign there, you educate the people there, you educate the people going into the shops, you take the things off the shelves, you dump, when you've, when you've got your food at home and you've eaten the packages, you eat what's in the packages, you chuck the food back into Tesco's. You make Tesco's a target because that is a real corporate polluter. It's in child supply chain, it goes right the way back to the farms across the entire world. And so you have a connection directly in so, front of your house okay, that so, connects to that system. So, so and that so is it, like that is like the campaign against South Africa. All right. So, so, so if 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 the boss of Tesco came down to this meeting, 
Tell him and fuck say, off. You tell him to fuck off? Yes. You wouldn't say to him, yo, you've got to cut down your plastic. No, no, you need the workers to take action inside the place, just like they did in about South Africa. The workers take action, we will not handle this. And then they gain control over the process in the uh, production, in, in the work process and the consumption process. They make the consumer aware, and as workers, they take action. Right. And then they have to challenge, ultimately, they have to challenge the ownership of the company itself. Okay, so, so, so here's one final question, then we're going to go inside. Yeah. Right? Maslow. Maslow's Pyramid, Maslow's Pyramid hierarchy of needs. You know about Maslow's Pyramid? I've heard of something. Okay, so Ma me. Maslow's Pyramid, so, so it's a pyramid, and at the bottom of the pyramid is uh, your basic needs, you know, air, yep. water, yep. food, yep. sex. Yep. Yeah. Then it goes to another level, shelter, goes to another level, you know, right. safety, right. companionship, and it goes up, love. Right. And then you get to the point where at the top of the pyramid you've got something called self-actualization. Self okay. So once you've met all your needs at the lower levels of the pyramid, you can then get involved with what really is important to you. Okay. you know? Once you've had food and you've got a roof over your head and you've got a job and your children are secure yeah. and everything's cool, you can then go out and get involved in environmental movements. Okay. So that being the case, that being the case, the people are so busy trying to deal with basic needs. Cost of living is getting higher. The gap between the wealthy and the poor is increasing. The cost of food is going up, while wages for the mass of people is being driven down. So end of the day, you're gonna to go to the supermarket and you're gonna buy perhaps what's cheapest. Yeah. It's not maybe the best environmentally sound produce but you're going to buy what's cheapest because your pocket is going to dictate you how do you explain to people that are just struggling to make ends meet that this environmental movement they are key to making this thing happen well you take that directly to the people as consumers and as producers in 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 the workplaces so in other words just the same as i said the the the, the workers in the dun store in ireland they refused to handle the oranges. It was just one person started and then they spread it. Now, if you turn around in the shops and you, and you work on the workers and you talk to them and you talk to the consumers and you do action inside the shops, you take the plastics off the shelves, put them in baskets, take the plastics off the shelves, do who, one who, row at a time. Who's gonna do Get that? five people. These people could go and do one shop now, close down the Tesco shop for, for, for weeks just by, by feeding five people in at a time to do that. And you're not committing any offence. All you do is go down the aisle, fill it all up, and then go back, go down the aisle, fill it all up, go back, go down the aisle, fill it all up, go back. You're taking action that's direct, that will get viral on the internet, that will get people understanding what's going on, the workers will be interested, you can shout it out to the customers, you can make it well known that there's a fundamental issue that goes, goes on at the core of our everyday lives. That's the point, it's not some abstraction, change the world, it's something right in front of your face that you can do something about. I hear you man, I hear you. Okay, good. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? Or, or, or no, think, that's enough for now. Do, I think, do, yeah, do, 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 do you think I scrutinised you enough? Well, you scrutinised as hard as you like. I mean, because you're 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 in favour of the green movement and all the rest of it. I'm not against the green movement, but I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm a Marxist associate. I've got my my viewpoint about the targets of change. But mm. I mean, they're not 100 percent the same as yours. But but the you know, a lot of the objectives will be the same. A lot of the movements will be the same. You know. I think we're done on that, yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Content over everything. From your government. Yeah. Man, say it straight. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to ITV. Listen.